scientists and the craftsmen work side by side, continually developing new ways of making electricity work for the benefit of man. British skill and British craftsmanship have long held an honored place throughout the world, and British goods are constantly finding their way into the farthest corners of the earth, doing their bit to help the national economy and to bring benefit to those who use them. One of the greatest manufacturing concerns of its kind in Great Britain is the English Electric Company, with its headquarters at Stafford. Thousands of workers are employed in the vast workshops every day. And so they are at its other factories, at Rugby. Bradford. Preston and Liverpool. Here in Stafford is under construction electrical equipment that will eventually find its way not only throughout Great Britain and the widespread lands of the Commonwealth and Empire, but into every corner of the world where people have come to know that the slogan made in Britain means superlatively well made and designed. This vast erecting shop, extensive though it is, is but a small part of one of the works where the company manufactures products for the highest technical standards. Here are giant transformers under construction, destined for the world's power system. In a neighboring shop, the associated switches to control the power are made. generators, both for the steam power stations and those used to harness some of the world's water power for the much needed reinforcement of power supplies both at home and overseas. this experience, research, and manufacturing organization is at the service of all who need the company's products, not least the railway engineer. The English Electric Company were pioneers in the field of using electricity as a source of power for railway traction. For the first electrified main line in Great Britain, between Liverpool and Southport, was powered by Dick Kerr and Company, one of the four firms which amalgamated in 1919 to form English Electric. When the time came for the application of the diesel engine to rail traction, once again it was this company who were pioneers in designing and constructing diesel electric locomotives for the railways of Great Britain. Since that time, English Electric has sent an ever-increasing number of diesel electric and electric locomotives abroad, where they've continued to win for themselves a reputation for efficiency, reliability, and an unfailing ability to do the work for which they were designed. In 1947, number 10,000, the first express diesel locomotive for Great Britain, was produced. This was achieved by the combined resources of the English Electric Company and what was then the LMS Railway Company. This first diesel locomotive is powered by a 1600 horsepower engine, which together with the whole of the control equipment was designed by the English Electric Company at its various works. While it was under test at Rugby, 
Test engineers lived with the giant 16 cylinder, 1600 horsepower engine day and night for over a week. Delicate instruments and meters were used to check over every part of her. And the readings taken at frequent intervals provided a perfect case history of the job. The diesel engine and main and auxiliary generators form one unit. It was specially designed and developed for rail traction. And the governing and control gear is arranged for complete remote control. Incidentally, this 17-ton engine is the largest V-type to be built in Britain. From Rugby, the engine was taken to the LMS works at Derby. Here, a new workshop is the first to be established in Britain exclusively for the construction and maintenance of diesel and diesel-electric locomotives. The decision to construct number 10,000 followed the successful experience gained by the LMS over several years of the application of the diesel-electric principle to shunting locomotives. By the use of these shunting units, of which over a hundred are in service, are on order, increased availability and saving in operating costs have been obtained. Now the application of the principle has been led to mainline passenger and freight services. The first main stage in the construction was dropping the engine into the frame. Everything connected with the assembly of this unit was new, so that at every stage new problems had to be faced and overcome. into position. Brains of the locomotive are mounted in a dust tight frame. This control equipment consists of electromagnetic and electro pneumatic contactors, relays, and reverser, and is operated by master controllers to be found at each end of the locomotive. Bulkheads are fitted at each end of the locomotive behind the driving compartment.
clean of the side plates, number 10,000 is beginning to look like the finished job. The body, sides and roof, together with the nose end, form one assembly which is supported on two pivots placed at each bulkhead behind the driving compartment. The frame is thus free to deflect without stressing any of the superstructure. section of the roof, that over the fuel tank, is being fitted into position. There are hinged doors in the roof so that the diesel engine covers, pistons and other parts can be easily removed for examination. The inside of the body, including the driver's compartments and the roof, are sprayed with asbestos to reduce noise and to provide good insulation. generator is transmitted to six traction motors, three on each of the two bogies. Adjustable cushion seats make driving number 10,000 almost an armchair job. A cab is provided at each end. Fittings include the main controller, brake valve, windscreen wipers, standing and hooter valve. There are defrosters and sun blinds. Dashboards with indirect lighting for the instruments give the crew information on the working of the engine and equipment. Almost the last job before number 10,000 can take the road is to provide her with wheels. The two bogies, each with their three traction motors, are pushed under the frames and superstructure. These bogies, of entirely novel design, are fitted with roller-bearing axle boxes. black and chromium, locomotive number 10,000 is an impressive sight as she moves slowly out of the shop for the first time. The men who for weeks have worked at her building are there to give her a send-off. After short preliminary trials, Diesel electric locomotive number 10,000 was run from Derby to London. The railwomen, who all their lives have been used to the familiar tattoo of the exhaust of steam engines, stopped a while from their work as the black and silver softly purring diesel speaks by. Is this, they thought, the shape of things to come? Romance still clings to the steam engine, but romance alone will not run the railways. New ideas, new methods must be given the chance to succeed. At Euston, on the 17th of December, 1947, the new locomotive made its first public appearance. And there too, to wish it success, were Sir Robert Burrows, then chairman of the LMS Railway, and Sir George Nelson, chairman and managing director of the English Electric Company. Sir George Nelson paid tribute to the LMS for their foresight and enterprise in building mainline diesel electric locomotives. In the States, said Sir George, overseas buyers can see hundreds of these engines. Now, we shall be able to bring overseas buyers to see this engine operating on our railways. After which, we hope the engine will sell itself. The English Electric Company has been privileged to be associated with the LMS over a great number of years. That association has proved valuable to its customers, the travellers, and to the world because it had enabled British equipment to be sold abroad. After the ceremony, the diesel engine was thrown open for inspection. entry into the railway service of locomotive number 10,000, a new page has been turned in the history of rail development in Britain. While the steam engine must remain for some considerable time the principal means of locomotion, it now has in number 10,000 a new challenger. Since her trials, number 10,000 has operated on the arduous route between London and Derby, passing Luton, Bedford, Leicester, Loughborough. She's done two round trips a day, 
with a total of 512 miles, and the train hauled has varied from nine to 12 coaches. Nowhere was she called on for her maximum effort, but speeds of well over 80 miles an hour can be attained. At Houston, a few months later, Diesel Electric 10,000 is joined by its teammate, Diesel Electric 10,001. Coupled together to form one single unit of 3,200 horsepower, they arouse more than a little curiosity in the eternal schoolboy which exists in most of us. pull out of Euston Station, drawing that most illustrious of trains, the Royal Scots, accelerating powerfully and easily up the difficult gradient outside the station. swiftly and surely through the pleasant English countryside on their way north to Scotland. These two long, sleek black giants, the joint products of the brains and craftsmanship of the English Electric Company and what now the London Midland region of British Railways, form one more visual proof that British electric achievement is unsurpassed anywhere in the world.